I'm Matt Jolly, and this is History Worth Saving, coming to you from the Red Barn at Fairchance Farm in Georgia, where great American stories grow strong. Welcome to the third season. Please, if you would, sign up for the newsletter at historyworthsaving.com. I'd love to stay in touch. And remember, if you like the show, tell your friends. If you don't, (laughs) well, bless your heart. Thanks for listening. Now, here's the show. On this episode of the History Worth Saving podcast, we're talking to Patrick Mahalik, a friend of mine who runs an after-school program for kids just outside Detroit, Michigan, where in the news, it seems like all we hear is the bad stuff that goes on and how the city's rebuilding and the crime. But where Patrick works, something really unique is happening. In fact, it's not just a museum or an after-school program. It's a way of life for these kids. Back in 2013, Patrick Mahalik and a group of young high school kids saved from a sandbar a World War II era bomber, a B-25 Mitchell. And right now, even as we record this, they are working diligently restoring this aircraft to its former glory. The Warbirds of Glory Museum and Patrick Mahalik are the subject of this episode of History Worth Saving. Patrick, thanks for being here. Hey, Matt, thank you greatly for having me. I've been to your museum, I've been to the school, and it is really something unique to see. Right now, you're in the process of raising capital to build a dedicated schoolhouse and hangar for these kids. Talk to us about this project, because it is enormous. So basically, the uh, the B-25 crashed June 27th of 1969 up in Fairbanks, Alaska. And I knew about it since I was about 18 years old and watched people, you know, vandalize the aircraft and pick parts off of it. And I said, you know, it, it was worth salvaging and saving. So very fortunately, um, with some help of some dedicated individuals, we were able to uh, basically form the our nonprofit, the Warburg's Glory Museum, get all the salvage rights, get the ownership, and uh, actually go out there and recover the aircraft. And uh, Logan Kucherik, who was 13 when he started coming around, who was 15 at the time of the recovery, actually went up there and helped us bring the airplane back. But we brought it back to Brighton, Michigan here and been restoring her ever since. And, uh, you know, we've we've made a lot of progress and, and, you know, we've had 45 students now come in after, you know, on the weekends and the evenings and, and work on the aircraft. And uh, now we're it's time for us to move from the Brighton Airport and actually get a permit home at the Livingston County Airport, which is not only going to allow us to speed up the restoration of some of the airplane, it'll allow us to get uh, you know, more students involved in the project. Metalworking, welding, CAD design, all of these skill sets that go into this are really leading these kids into potentially lucrative jobs right there uh, in the auto capital of the world, Detroit. And these companies... They get it. I mean, they understand that. Now, you guys are out in the suburbs and you have some really loyal helpers out there when it comes to corporate sponsors. Uh, One of them that stands out to me is the company that makes your fixtures. And what, you know, what's a fixture? Well, it's this thing that you bolt the components of the airplane inside so they don't shift and and they, they stay straight because it's important to have an airplane straight. But you have lots of these corporate sponsors who understand the value of an educated and skilled workforce. And I think that's great. Absolutely. Uh, AMC has been absolutely great to us. Actually, uh, uh, the president of the company's son is, is one of our students. And uh, that's actually how AMC ended up getting involved with us. And, you know, the, a lot of the students, uh, we call it perpetual learning because what we do is as we train these students, you know, a lot of them, you know, we, we've had some kids come in and they spend a couple of weeks and they just realize it's not for them. But uh, the ones that do that become the diehard ones, they, they come back and they'll, they'll stay all the way up into their late teens. And, you know, now they are the ones that are, are taking the skills that we handed down to them. And now they're handing those skills down to the new students. I mean, that's everything from the CAD CAM, you know, CNC operation, billing, turning, you know, advanced aircraft sheet metal, I mean, forming, you know, using an English wheel, punishing hammer, all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, these kids are learning, you know, valuable skills that they could take into their career. And, and Logan, I mean, he started when he was 13, you know, he, uh, you know, was building model airplanes, 
you know, he worked his way all the way through, um, became very efficient, you know, in aviation maintenance, sheet metal, all that kind of stuff, had a very interest in engineering with CAD. And he actually just graduated Western Michigan University with his uh, bachelor's in aerospace engineering. And now he's, uh, you know, searching for uh, a job that will, uh, you know, future his career in that. Um, some of our students went out into the armed forces and, uh, you know, they, they come home to see their families and their families have to end up coming to visit them because they're at the hangar working on the airplane. So, um, you know, they, they just, they can't get enough of it. And, you know, our goal is, is to make this a flying, you know, memorial to honor the veterans, but not only that, to be one of the nicest flying B-25s that's out there. And the best part is it's being built by, you know, young guys and girls. I think it's great. The B-25, of course, uh, earned its place in history a number of times, but but really, I think most people associate the B-25 with the Doolittle Raid. So just a few months after Pearl Harbor was bombed, 80 brave men launched off the deck of the USS Hornet and attacked the heart of Japan. Now, this was thought to be impossible, but under the command of Jimmy Doolittle, they did it. They pulled it off. And we have met a lot of these Doolittle Raiders, as they're affectionately known over the years. And even, I think, Logan probably had the opportunity to meet some. But, but that, that story, that storyline of the B-25 Mitchell, a medium bomber from World War II, uh, it, it translates to these kids in a very real way in your program because they're hands-on. I, I want to focus just a minute on this project to move because you do need a permanent home. You need a schoolhouse. You need a museum. You're going about this in a way that a lot of museums don't. <laughs> so most people uh, who are you know going into the museum business, right, they start with the actual artifact. They start with a collection or something to open their museum around. But you, you ran out and got it and it was just a hulk of parts and junk and you're building your artifact. So the, the museum is, is a thing that you hope to grow into. But right now, as, as you and I were discussing, uh, you're, you're in the school business. I mean, you're building this airplane, uh, restoring it, and you need a home. So how, how has that been from a, a director's position how talk to us about this struggle because i'm sure it is a struggle yeah it is so i mean like you were saying i mean most most museums start with a benefactor and uh, we didn't have a benefactor we had a dream we had a vision and we knew we could do it and uh, so we you know we created our 501c3 and um, recovered the aircraft and we've had a lot of beautiful artifacts donated um to be put on display a lot of the, the there's a lot of history when it comes to restoring the aircraft to authenticity and uh, ours never saw combat, but we're restoring her to a combat vet aircraft that served in the 340th Bomb Group 40th Squadron. And we have a lot of artifacts from that actual aircraft that was shot down over Italy, um, plus a lot of the uh, belongings to the crew of that airplane. But we've been at the Brighton Airport since 2013, and we've been very blessed that Todd uh, Trainer, who's one of my board members, um, basically opened his hangar home to us. Now, it's always, I joke around and say, Catch-22 because of the movie Catch-22 with the B-25 in the book. And uh, it's one of these things where, you know, we need the public support to get the funding to be able to grow out and to be in, you know, a, a public area, a commercial airport, where because we are in a residential airport, we're allowed to operate because we're doing aircraft activities on the airport. But... We cannot have posted hours. We can't have a posted address. Visitation has to be by appointment only, and that has hindered us a lot. Um, but basically, uh, the hangar that we currently are in, um, our lease ends in 2023, and uh, the hangar in the home will be going for sale. So at that point in time, we have to actually uh, move out, and, and the museum and, and, the, and our program will be homeless. So we are trying to raise the money between now and uh, basically fall of next year to move, you know, the museum and our student program over to the Livingston County Airport in Howell, Michigan, which not only gives us enough space to have, you know, the flying aircraft, but it'll give us the space for the restoration to grow our student program, allow to finally be able to uh, work with some of the local schools and uh, and just and just grow and finally have the potential that we know we can have. You're leaving the nest. Yeah, basically, yeah. I, to me, this story and the reason I wanted you on this show is because I think it is so it is just so American. I mean, you hear, here's a guy with a dream, a young guy with a dream. 
and you set out to make this happen and you've inspired all of these students uh, to come along with you. And, you know, a lot of people don't go after students when they go after benefactors. My guess is that your program is going to grow its own benefactor. And the big support will come from one of these kids. And I, I believe that. I really do. I, I just think this is such a unique program, uh, the way it started and the way it is working, uh, that it's going to be so interesting to follow uh, the Warbirds of Glory Museum over the next 20, 30 years as this project uh, not only comes to completion, but something else follows suit because what you're doing is is not just restoring an airplane. I mean, really and truly, you're you're building a community and you're building a workforce. It's remarkable. Uh, talk to me about some of these skill sets because you mentioned a few of them, uh, but, but let's dive a little deeper into this because these kids, they do leave your program uh, with no kidding, job skills. Absolutely. So I'm going to use Dave actually as a reference, and he's one of our students that's 18. And, uh, I mean, Dave basically, you know, through through high school, he had some CAD CAM experience, um, you know, so we helped him refine that. And, uh, you know, Dave's now at the point where, you know, he'll come in. I'll literally, we'll hand him a North American drawing and say, you know, here's the original part that's damaged. And uh, he'll go through the drawing. He'll do all the CAD work. He'll go through, he'll reverse engineer all the tooling. And there's even parts that we have that, um, you know, we may, like some of the stuff for the turrets, you know, we don't have the drawings for. So it's all reverse engineering. So, you know, we work with, uh, uh, you know, Ferro Technologies. Pratt & Miller just donated to us a beautiful Ferro arm scanner. Um, so that way we can actually now 3D scan, uh, 3D trace our parts with a probe. Um, but, you know, the, he's reverse engineering these parts. He's designing the tooling. He's then taking it, you know, creating all the G code to run the CNC machine. He's running the CNC 100% on his own and basically, you know, presenting us with finished parts. Now, if it's a sheet metal part, you know, he'll do all the, you know, design work, do all the flat panel work, um, you know, have it all cut out on the CNC router. Uh, some of the stuff that, you know, the students, they, they don't go ahead and they use a the router. They'll cut it out by hand, but a lot of it is done on the routers. And then, uh, you know, once again, design, design the tooling for it. He'll go ahead, bend the part, you know, fit the part in the aircraft, drill it, and then even go through the whole process of heat treating. I mean, we have a small heat treating oven, so we could do smaller stuff. But, I mean, he's taking it from, from the drawing to the finished part. And, uh, you know, at 18 years old, I mean, that those are skills that, you know, just when, when he goes to apply for jobs, you know, and, and, and you know, finishes college and, and, or goes through a trade school, you know, all the stuff that he's done on his resume is just going to put him that much ahead. And, I mean, that even with Logan, for instance – I mean, you know, being involved in the museum, the stuff that he did, you know, helped him out so greatly when it came to getting, you know, grants and scholarships for college. And, you know, even on his resume, you know, it's impressive, the stuff that and the experience that they've had. And you got to get him, you know, involved in this stuff young. And it's not only the skills, but it's this appreciation of this history, because the big thing is all these all this history that's here, all this World War II history. If you don't get the younger generations interested in it. Who's going to be the ones that's going to be taking care of this stuff as the years to come? Well, and not just the stuff, but I mean, it's so important to understand the why behind it and and yeah. how that how that affects us every day. And I mean, they these kids, uh, they certainly understand it. I know Logan does, who I've spent some time with. They understand the the importance of all of this and and the, the why it's important. And that's that is so critical. How many parts, Patrick, are on a B twenty five? Oh, uh, thousands and thousands. Um, I mean. I know we have somewhere around 90,000 drawings, but there's, there's duplicates of drawings because there's change revisions. But if I had to actually put a number, I'd probably say somewhere in the, you know, 30 some thousand parts that make up uh, a B25 bond. that make up the B25. And, uh, you know, during one of my students, Sean, actually during the, the COVID pandemic, um, when the, when sadly the hangar was closed and we couldn't have our student program running, um, basically spent most of his time. And what he actually did was he actually opened up because the, the B25 parts manual is absolutely fantastic, but it doesn't go to the full breakdown of every assembly because it's basically change assembly. So something that can be bolted on the aircraft or, or replaced easily. So what he did is he started at the top of the tree and just worked his way down the plan schedule to each drawing, opened it, and then basically hand typed on Excel spreadsheets every single piece of that airplane comparing it to the early model j to the late model j's and trying to see what the differences were trying to figure out uh you know because we know 
you know, the serial number, the one that was lost over Italy to find out exactly what equipment was on that aircraft to try to bring our aircraft to that. So, I mean, all this research that has been done to, you know, to this extent, you know, the hours and hours Sean put into it, it's just amazing. And it's never been done like that before, I think, with the B-25. So it's it's neat to be able to compare and contrast. And, you know, once again, you know, now we have these, uh, the, these this comparison so when, say, Dave or one of the other students wants to go ahead and make a part, they can just go to that Excel sheet and say, okay, we have that part. Yes, it's damaged. It needs to be replaced. It needs to be this drawing revision. And then they can just go ahead and take that drawing out and go ahead and make that part. I bring this up because, you know, a lot of people, they say, well, what has he done? Let's see the airplane. And, and you go there and you look and there's, there's a lot of stuff, but they don't see an airplane. I mean, there's some components there that look like an airplane, but they don't see it. And I, I love the idea that, you sit down to build a puzzle, but you have to have all of the puzzle pieces first. And right now, you're in the puzzle piece phase. <laughs> you're creating well, we're, 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 literally 30,000 pieces. <laughs> the, the border has been put together. Now it's just filling the insides up. And, the, and you know, one of the things we do with these students is, you know, the B-25 is a large airplane. And you can't look at it as a full assembly. You have to look at it at the individual sub-assemblies. And then that's what they do is they, they basically pick, you know, a sub-assembly and then they go through, they work on it. I um, mean, the, you know, at the beginning, there was a lot of uh, smaller projects that the students did that allowed them to do. So that way they could actually see something completed all the way through completion. You know, one of the first things they did was the throttle quadrant. You know, that was all done. All the uh, cockpit control stuff uh, was completed. And but let's then, back uh, up here just a second, because the first thing they had to do, and I, and I am not a restoration guy like yourself. Uh, who you have a degree in this, but, but here's the thing you have to go through and pull these parts apart to get the pattern. I mean, there's no, you know, there are blueprints for this kind of stuff, as you mentioned in the CNC router that cuts all of this stuff out. But I mean, there's a lot of disassembly just so you can make the new part that has to go into this. I mean, it's a massive, massive project. And absolutely. And I mean, when, when we recovered sandbar and brought it back, the most important part of that aircraft was the center section, the main wing spars. And we had to basically get it completely disassembled down to the spar caps to have it what was called non-destructive tested to make sure that there was no damage, no corrosion in those spars, which is the main support of the wing structure. And uh, what we did was, is, you know, we brought it home. We actually put that the center section and the parts and sandbar in a hangar. And we had another center section from another B-25 that was badly corroded, that could never be made airworthy. And sadly, it was so far gone that it couldn't even be made to be used static. So what we did is we used it as a training aid. You know, the students came over, they drilled rivets on it, they took it apart, and they learned how to make mistakes. So we went through it and said, hey, okay, this, you know, the, we showed them how to drill the rivets. Um, we showed them step by step on how to take it apart, and we allowed them to do it. And uh, from those mistakes that they learned, they learned the skills and how to drill the rivets and do it correctly. And at that point in time, when they were done with that, then we brought over the good center section from Sandbar, which is, you know, if any damage is done to that, it, it, it could ultimately cause the aircraft to never be able to fly again. So these students worked, you know, for almost a year, uh, really taking the entire center section compart, drilling out every single rivet, removing every nut, bolt, screw, and uh, and then once that was done, then everything had to be cleaned. So all the parts had to be paint, you know, paint removed from it, uh, you know, cleaned, uh, scrubbed. And at that point in time, we took all the major uh, structural components and then worked with a company out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, that came down and they did the non-destructive test on it and gave us a clean bill of health, you know, for for an airworthy spars. And at that point in time, you know, we had to design all the fixtures. We had to to basically go through and start making all the parts that make up all the spar webbing and some of the stiffeners that had to be replaced because people shot at the airplane. So we had to replace that webbing because there was bullet holes in it and uh, stuff like that. And so now the, the rear spar is completely done. It's, it's uh, all riveted together. The front spar has all the, the parts that need to be made, made the, uh, the center spar basically, which is the landing gear beam and the fuel webbing. That's all been, uh, you know, all the parts that needed to be replaced on that. Actually, the gear area where the gear mount to was probably one of the worst areas in the center section just because of some damage from actually the landing accident. And there was uh, some severe corrosion that was in that area from mice getting down in there. But other than that, um, I mean, they went through and basically reconstructed that whole area of the airplane. And now the center section is ready. Um, I would say probably by the end of this year, 
the uh, all the the front spar, the center spars will all be riveted together, and then we'll start designing the fixture to actually go ahead and start reassembling the center section. And then on a, a side project, you know, we started working on the Ford fuselage. Caitlin, uh, one of our students, she came in, had an interest in uh, uh, antique cars because of her dad, and uh, she spent about two weeks with us. And at that point in time, decided that she wanted, you know, to take a career in aviation maintenance. And now she's going to MIAT here in Michigan to become an airplane mechanic and just absolutely fell in love with the B-25. So one of the projects that she took on was to start restoring the whole upper top of the of the Ford fuselage. So the whole upper, the front cowl assembly the her and uh, Sean have completely made all the brand new parts. That's all been redone. The whole upper canopy assembly has been disassembled and all put back together with all the new bits and pieces that need to be put into it. And now uh, they start, they're just starting to uh, remove the upper uh, the skin on the top of the Ford fuselage and replace that. We just finished the uh, uh, kind of an eye candy because it's kind of neat to take the air shows and let people see how it works is the complete <clears throat> original, excuse me, <clears throat> original uh, Bell M7 tail turret. So, uh, I mean, they're, they're a very rarity in the B-25s, and we're very fortunate that we were able to get one. Uh, you know, some of the parts on it were very, you know, in uh, disarray and were not usable, but they were good patterns. And the students went ahead and made the new parts, replaced it, and now we have a fully up and operational uh, tail turret for the B-25. And but I want to just, all- I want to say something, because I think this is important for you to hear, and also for the, the folks who have been through your program here. You yourself... I know you're building a B-25, but this program is not about building a B-25. It's about building young people. And I, I think anyone who donates to your cause and who wants to build this school and build this understanding um, of what is being done and how great it is has to get the fact that the mission is building young people. And you, you talk about these young folks and what they're doing. But the story that you've shared about Logan, the story that you've shared about the young lady, the other young lady and Anthony and all of these kids who started out as kids have grown into these fabulous young people who are going to be contributing members of society. And, you know, for those who are interested, they've discovered a new career. They've discovered something uh, that is the this country's third largest export is aviation, right? Food, oil and then aviation. They are really bringing up this country in, in something that we need. I mean, we need farmers. Sure, we need oil and gas, but aviation, that is the hallmark of America. And Patrick, my hat's off to you. I mean, we can sit here and talk that. about the 30,000 parts in this airplane, but really, it's the kids. I mean, it's these kids that you have truly changed their lives. And I think any of them uh, would say that. And I, I just, you, you should be celebrated for that and what you're doing. You and Todd all of the adult volunteers down there who are doing this just out of the, you know, the goodness of your own hearts is, is remarkable. It really is remarkable. And it's to be commended, especially in an area that gets so much bad press. Greatly, greatly appreciate them that. And I know once we can get our new home over at Livingston County airport and actually have a, uh, a public space that's not going to be zoned residential and, and, and actually people have post hours. I know that the, you know, the museum and our, and our apprenticeship program is going to be able to just excel and uh, we'll finally be able to get to where we want to be. And that's just what we're hoping that we could do. If we can get enough public support to be able to raise close to the half a million dollars that we need to raise, we'll be able to, uh, to move there. And if anybody wants any naming rights on a building, we have that option too. So <laughs> <laughs> you'll gladly name it after them if they want yeah. to. Let's talk yeah. about this. Cause I know you have known you a number of years, you know, the dollar figure, what are you looking for? You said it's close to a half million. What are you looking for? About, about, a, it's, it's going to be about a half a million, I think to, to acquire the building. There's, there's a couple hangers that are available at, that are coming available at the Livingston County airport. And there's one that we have our eye on that uh, would be big enough to house the, the school and the museum. It's just that we have to, and, and, and we figure we could get it for probably around that for around a half a million. And then there's obviously there's some ones that are, you know, up in the, the higher digits that uh, the nice one about this is this, this hangar actually the frontage where it's actually, yeah, it's on, on the main main run that road that runs through Howell. So it's, it's right on the main drag there. It's got a you know, really nice big area for, uh, you know, be able to have events. Cause one of our visions would be is to be able to have, you know, monthly, you know, 
events like once a month have like a you know a military car show airplane show where people would want to bring you know stuff and we want to have a, a history night where you know we have people come in and, and teach a you know some kind of history lesson on something you know you know aviation or world war ii related um you know and, and then really start getting our younger you know students back involved because of because of covid we had to basically halt all that so it's uh you know we we try to start the students around 13 years old and what we want to do is have like a, a intro to aviation type course that uh, these students are going to be able to come into and you know and, and start learning the basic skills before we start putting them onto the more advanced stuff and the plan will be to keep the airplane absolutely yeah once once sandbar mitchell is done um, we're going to go ahead and, and, and start working on another airplane. And it's always going to be, you know, World War II related because we are a World War II history museum. Uh, we have a Russian Lend-Lease B-25 that came out of Nome, Alaska. And uh, as the more parts we collect and start going over things, that airplane starts looking more and more feasible. Like at some point in time, we technically could, after Sandbar, if we wanted to, rebuild the Russian airplane to possibly a flying airplane. It just needs... That one does need new spars, but there's also another uh, another airplane that we have basically salvage rights to that's up in uh, up in Alaska that we just need to raise the funds to go up and get. And there's a couple other ones that we have our eye on that we've heard stories of and that we've been looking at. So, you know, the the hope is is that once Sandbar is done flying, that we'll uh, you know just always have some kind of restoration project going on here at the museum. That's going to be taking an aircraft that was probably considered beyond repair and, and turning it back to its former glory. Well, I love it. The Warbirds of Glory Museum in Brighton, Michigan, about to move if they can find the half million dollars under somebody's couch cushions uh, to, to make <laughs> this happen. I, but, you know, but Patrick, as I've said, uh, a lot of aviation guys, that's how you and I know each other. We're both involved in this stuff. I mean, they, they look at this and they go, oh, those guys are restoring a B-25. And I, I can't tell you how many times at the, at the event we were just at where I, I turned to them and I said, no, you're looking at this wrong. Yeah, they're, they're restoring a B-25. But, but Patrick is building young people. He, he, you know, he's changing lives and he is, he's a guy that's after this for all the right reasons. And yes, at the end of the day, the students have something to show for themselves. They have this B-25 that they're working on. And that's, that's great. That's important. But you have to look at what's really going on up here. And I think that if you look at the product that you're turning out in Logan and in all of these different students that you've talked about, that's where the real gold in this project is. And I, to me, that's, man, that needs to be on every, uh, on every billboard you've got because I think it's just fantastic. Look, I, I hope the new schoolhouse comes together and the hangar comes together for you. I hope some folks hear this and get behind it. If they want to donate and if they want to get involved in this project, how can they do that? They can go to our website, which is warbirdsofglory.org. All right. We'll make sure that's and From there, there, there's all of our contacts on there and there's uh, direct uh, donation buttons as well. Yeah, just go in there and hit that with a half million. Or you can write that, a check. That, and you know. that would blow all of us away. I mean, I can I couldn't tell you how the students would feel, my board would feel. I mean, you know, we're, yeah. we're 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 blessed to have a good support team, but now we just need the financial support to get us to where we need to be. And then it's puzzle piece time. Once you get them all ready to go in that box, you're laying them all out yet. I mean, that's that's the next step, right? And then you're just going to see this thing come together in rapid fashion, and before long. We'll see the Sandbar Mitchell on takeoff roll right there at the airport. I think it's going to be fantastic, and I can't wait to see it. Patrick Mahoney. Me either, Matt. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. If you'd like to follow along with History Worth Saving, you can do that at our website, historyworthsaving.com. Sign up for the newsletter, and of course, stay in touch with Patrick. The Warbirds Glory Museum, their website will be quick linked in the bottom of this show story. I am Matt Jolly for Patrick Mahalik. This has been History Worth Saving.